Hey guys, welcome back. One of the projects or improvements that we're continuing to work on throughout this off season is to create more bedding opportunities on our property. And in this video, I wanna show you guys how we like to use natural bedding areas to guide us when we're creating these man-made bedding areas. We've made a few videos in the past on bedding areas and we'll likely continue to make more videos on bedding areas into the future. But while we still have some snow on the ground here in West Michigan, I did want to take some time today to show you guys a couple different man-made areas on the property where we're trying to encourage deer bedding as well as a natural bedding area on the property. When we're trying to encourage deer to bed in a certain location on our property, creating these man-made bedding areas, we're not recreating the wheel. What we're trying to do is recreate these natural bedding areas that we find when we're scouting on our properties. We're, we're trying to let the deer tell us what they prefer when selecting a bedding area. Also, before we actually dive into these locations, I did want to let you guys know that the bedding areas that we're going to be referencing in today's video, along with most of the bedding areas that are located on our properties, are located for the most part on flat ground. So again, in today's video, we're going to be traveling to three different locations to show you guys you know, the three different areas that we want deer to be bedded on our property. Uh, the first one is going to be the one that I'm standing in. This area, the deer are not currently bedded down in. They're traveling through it, but they haven't bedded down in it yet. So, so we still have some work to do to encourage deer to bed in this, in this area. The second location is gonna be an area that we also uh, created uh, within the last month, but the deer are already starting to use this area to bed in. And finally, I do wanna take you to a natural bedding area on the property to show you guys kinda, of, you know, this is not an area that we have done anything to to manipulate it or influence the, the bedding in that area. It's just an area that the deer really like to bed in. And I wanna show you guys how you can use these natural bedding areas as a guide when trying to create these man-made bedding opportunities on your property. As I mentioned, the first location that we're gonna be talking about here is a man-made bedding area, an area that we want to encourage deer to bed down throughout the, the hunting season. And, and currently right now, the deer are traveling through the area. I can see tracks kind of leading through behind the camera and I can see them kind of leading out one of the, uh, the escapes behind me to, to my left camera right. Uh, but currently, I, I am not seeing any beds in this location. And it, it, we've had snow on the ground here for the past month. So if, if deer were bedded in this little section right here, I would be able to tell. Uh, but so, so that's something that I need to try to figure out. You know, why are these deer not bedded down in this location? What can I do to help encourage that? When trying to encourage deer to bed down in, in certain locations on your property by creating these man-made bedding areas, there are a few things that you need to make sure that your bedding area has. And we've gone over this in a, in a few videos in the past, but I, I did wanna go over it again just so you can try to notice these in, in the areas that we're gonna be visiting uh, in this video, as well as notice those same themes uh, in the natural bedding area that we're gonna kind of go into last. The, the first is you wanna make sure that the deer have cover. Deer really wanna bed down in thick, secure, high stem count cover. And, and so when you're taking down a lot of these larger trees, you're gonna get that cover down uh, on, on the ground immediately just when you're starting to drop those trees. But the second thing that you wanna make sure that you have within your bedding area is an area for these deer to move around freely. So I don't know if you can kind of see behind me here, I do have a lot of cover here to kind of the, the camera right and my left, uh, but I, I also have an area where it's pretty open in here. So I do have an, an area you could probably, uh, maybe if this, hinge cut ironwood was out of the way. You, you could park a, a, a truck in here, no problem. You know, so there is a lot of uh, room in here for these deer to move around. And this is very important because you wanna make sure the deer can move freely throughout the bedding area without much restriction. The third thing that every bedding area needs is multiple escape routes, you know, multiple ways for the deer to come in and out of this, this bedding area, this bedding pocket. And so I, I have one kind of behind the camera. I've also got one kind of behind the camera, the, the other direction. And I don't know if you can see behind me, I, I do have uh, an entrance or an exit kind of cut in between that, that red oak there. I just sectioned out that red oak that was dropped just so the deer can kind of get out of this area you know with with ease they don't have to really jump over anything they can just kind of leisurely walk right on out of the bedding area based on a lot of the natural bedding areas that we find you know outside of being pressure free you know no human intrusion those seem to be the three most important factors when determining the structure of the bedding area they have a lot of screening cover around the outside there's an open area in the in the middle for these deer to, to bed down in and to, to move freely and, and there's plenty of ways for these deer to get in and out of that location 
And so that's what we're trying to recreate when we're trying to encourage deer to bed down on our property. And we like to take it a step further and we like to create individual beds within this bedding pocket. So I don't know if you can see it, but I have kind of a, a bedding log here off to the right. Uh, I cleared an area off there. I have another area back there that I cleared off. I don't think you can see this one, but I've got a, a couple more of them uh, off to my right camera left. But none of these areas have uh, been used yet. I can see that the deer tracks, they're, they're going into the area. They're going into the, the individual spots that I have cleared out for them to bed down in, but they, but they haven't been using them in this location yet. So I, I need to, to figure out why that is. Maybe this is too tight. Maybe I need to open it up a little bit more. Maybe I need to make these escape routes a little bit easier. You know, I, I just have to kind of figure that out because they, they haven't been using this bedding area yet. But there is another bedding area that we made kind of similar to this one that they are using already within the, within the first month of, of its creation. So that's where I want to kind of take you guys next. Just kind of show you guys uh, what that one looks like. Very similar to this one, a little bit different, but same themes. All right, so moving on to location number two. This is another area where we're trying to increase the probability that the deer are gonna be using this area as a bedding location throughout the hunting season. They haven't been using it as a bedding area before. Uh, so what we did, very similar to the first location, we took down a lot of trees. We tried to bring a lot of cover uh, down to the ground. Uh, that's kind of why I have the camera facing this way so you can hopefully see this deer bed as well as the cover uh, behind me here. And there's also cover kind of behind behind the camera that you can't see. But just kind of want to show you guys um, an area, you know, very similar themes as, as the first one, but, but the deer have already started to bed down in this location. And that does surprise me a little bit. Uh, most of the time, I don't really see the deer bedding down in, in the man-made bedding areas right away, mainly because I'm back here working on them a lot, just trying to fine tune them, open them up, cut these escape paths. So to see them using these already with you know a couple different beds in this location, you know, within the, the first month, you know, is um, it's not surprising. It's a it's a good spot to hang out, but it, it just it's surprising because we're here so much. So there's a lot of pressure, and most of the time they don't really want to deal with that. And so I, I don't really see beds in the bedding areas right away. But so it's very encouraging to see them using it already. But again, I want to show you guys this area for a couple reasons. One, to show you that the deer are already using this this bedding area, and to show you guys that it has a lot of the same themes as the first bedding area. The first is, you know, we, we took down a lot of trees, again, to create that, that screening cover, you know, a, around the bedding area. So I took down a, a large maple behind me and I hinge cut a couple smaller ones on top of it. So the tops were kind of pushed into where I'm at right now. Uh, I dropped another large maple kind of behind the camera to again, create that screening cover. So these deer, when they're in this area, they feel very safe. Uh, but what happened when I hinge cut those trees on top of the, the larger maple there, a lot of the tops kind of pushed into this area. So I had to come in here with a chainsaw and open this area back up. Where I'm standing right now was, was covered with tops. Uh, I had to come in here and I had to kind of cut a lot of the stuff out of here to open it back up. And then I also had to kind of cut escapes. There's, there's a escape behind the camera there. I don't know if you can kind of see there's a tunnel. Uh, uh, through this the maple top right there, but there's multiple ways in and out of this bedding location. It's open in the middle. These deer can find a nice comfortable place to lay down. And once they are within this bedding pocket, they are hidden. There's a couple of spots or if I'm walking around, I can see, you know, a little ways that I, I need to probably address. But for the most part, once I'm in this location, especially if I get down on my knees, get down to deer level, you know, I, I can really only see 25, 30 yards at the most. And while I still have a lot of work to do in this individual location, seeing that the deer are already using this area is very encouraging. I have yet to go in and create individual beds, but you know, just by creating those preferred bedding conditions, you're really gonna increase the probability that the deer are gonna bed down in the areas on your property that you want them to. They have the screening cover around so they're hidden in this location, but at the same time, they can still move freely through the area and there's multiple ways in and out of this bedding pocket. And again, when trying to provide those preferred bedding conditions on your property, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Again, we're trying to let the deer tell us what they prefer to bed in. And that's the last area I wanna take you on our property is an area that's a natural bedding area on our property to kind of show you guys how those same themes are present.
All right, so now we are just on the outside of the third and final location that I want to show you guys in today's video. And this is a natural bedding area. So I haven't done anything to influence this area. I haven't done any work here. This is just an area that the deer prefer to bed down on our property. And I want to show you guys this location because there's a lot of similar themes that we see in a lot of bedding areas when scouting that we try to replicate when we're trying to create our man-made bedding area. So to hopefully give you guys a better idea what this looks like, I'm gonna grab the camera and then kind of walk you guys through this bedding area. Okay, so I am walking into this area here. I'm kind of coming down a small hill and I haven't been in here in a couple of weeks. So it looks like I should have probably gone in here yesterday before the snow started melting. Shoot, but there, I know where there's three beds for sure because I saw them from the hill. But I just want to kind of bring you guys into this location just to kind of show you uh, what this looks like in here. So right now I'm standing at about six foot tall, but let me go down to deer level here. Let me duck down here. So you can kind of see here, that's, that's uh, east over there. And I kind of got these tag alders in the way. So you kind of got some screening cover. And then as I pan south, there's more screening cover in the form of those Phragmites, Phragmites, the invasive. And as I go to look west, all right, we got some more tag alders, some maples, some dogwood that way. So we got screening cover to the west, and we also have screening cover to the north. Now, it might appear that it's wide open, and it is wide open, but screening cover isn't just, you know, grasses and trees or treetops. It can also be elevation change, and that's what we have here. So we have, we have screening cover there in the form of elevation change with that hill. So that, that's probably a 20 foot rise right there, and, or we're on a 20 foot drop. And so really, I can't see more than about 35 to 40 yards in that direction. So we have screening cover around the outside. And in the middle here, let me back up a little bit to just try to show you guys this. Look at how open it is in the middle, okay? So there's our screening cover. And in the middle here, it's open. So these deer, when they're in here, they can move around very freely, right? There's not a lot impeding their movement and just kind of a ring of cover around the outside. And then there's multiple ways in and out. I kind of, as you saw from the north view, they can go anywhere they want up that hill. And there's, there's little ways, obviously there's lots of ways in and out through these, uh, these tag alders there, through the dogwoods. Let's see if we can find those beds uh, that I had seen earlier. And this is where I should have filmed this probably yesterday before it started to melt. But so here's you know, a, lot of, a lot of poop and I, I think the, the bed was over here. Let's see if I can find any hair. I'm not sure if I'd be able to or not. Let's see. Oh, yep, here we go. There's some hair. Right, I don't know if you can see it, but got some hair. See if my hand goes into focus. Yeah, there's some hair. Try to get it against the leaf. Probably not. I don't know. But yeah, there was a bed right there. Uh, let's see, I think there was a bed over here. Kind of like right there where that um, kind of ring is right there, there was a bed. There was another bed, I think underneath that log, which surprised me. Let's see if I can find any hair in this one. Is this hair? Yep, that's hair right there. There we go. There's some hair there. And then there was another bed back, kind of tucked into these tag alders into the Phragmites. I think it, there was maybe two. One, one of them was right there. And then there was another one kind of back in there. So this is actually probably one of the paths in and out, but there was a deer bedded on it. And this is kind of just off to the side of that escape route or the deer chose to bed. But anyways, just kind of wanted to show you guys one of these natural bedding areas, just to kind of show you what I'm trying to recreate, uh, or just one example of what I'm trying to recreate. But we, when I find these natural bedding areas, either on our properties or properties that I visit, a lot of them are very similar. They all have these very similar characteristics. And, and that's really what I'm trying to replicate when I'm creating these man-made bedding areas. 
Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully this was helpful in showing you guys what deer prefer to bed in with a natural bedding area. I think we showed you guys one on our previous property, but I wanted to show you guys another one on this property as well. And, and how we like to use what the deer already want to bed in, you know, that information when trying to create those man-made bedding areas as well. If you guys do have any questions on bedding areas or any questions in general, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.